Welcome everybody to the NFL presidential address for week seven. I can't believe we're that deep into the season already. Uh, so much to talk about. If you guys have never watched the show before, I'm going to take apart almost every single game on the board. I'll give you bets across all of those games. There will be a few passes along the way. If I can't find anything, I'm not going to make it up. I'm Lawrence Presman. I'm co-founder of Wager Talk Media. We own the Gold Sheet Sports Memo and Wager Talk. And thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this video. Hopefully it'll be under 20 minutes. Let's get to it. Look, the Thursday night football game features Denver minus two against New Orleans, a total of 37 and a half. And guys, I'm going to be passing on this game right now. I am looking to bet the under, but given how low the number is, uh, I just, I just can't seem to get to the window on this game. So we're going to move forward to New England and Jacksonville. Uh, New England plus five and a half. Uh, the total in this game is 42 and a half. And well, regretfully for my clients, we had Jacksonville last week in London and they forgot to show up. I don't think they got a memo that there was a game. Uh, the Jags team right now is a total joke. They couldn't stop Caleb and the Bears at all. Uh, Caleb put up close to 400 yards on them. Uh, their offense is horrible, and frankly, it wasn't even Fabio's fault. There were five, five in-the-basket drop passes by the wide receivers, and some of them would have resulted in actual scores. Now they play the Patriots, who were able to move the chains with Drake May at quarterback. Now, I know he had two interceptions, and they did have four turnovers altogether, but he also went 20 for 33 with 243 yards, uh, and he had three touchdown passes. So what do we do in this game? F if I know. We're passing here. I just wanted to give you some information. But on a whole, I don't think I can get to the window on this game at all. I'm mad at Jacksonville. I don't know what the Drake may led Pats are going to do. If a gun was held to my head, I would take under the total, but it isn't. So, alas, we move to Seattle playing Atlanta. Before we get into the Seattle-Atlanta game, and I got a bet for you on this game, actually two. Uh, I do want to give out a promo code. Now, guys, you all know my NFL. Uh, my clients who play my NFL, they had a winning week this past week. We've had uh, three winning weeks out of the last four. It's a perfect time to be betting me. Uh, but it's also my NHL that I've built my reputation on. Between my NFL and NHL, those are my two best sports. They have been that way for about three and a half decades. Uh, and I have a buy one, get one free promo. If you buy a month of my NFL package, $179, you get a month of my NHL for free. This is an incredible promotion, and this is a great time to take advantage of that, as I usually kick ass in October and November in both of these sports. So head over to Wager Talk. You can uh, look at my page, wt.buzz forward slash LP. Uh, that package is there. It is $179. Buy one, get one free NHL and NFL combined. Okay, let's get into the Seattle-Atlanta game. Seattle here is plus two and a half. There are some threes on the board. There's clearly money coming in on Atlanta right now. And the total in this game is 51. Uh, well, it took a while for the Falcons to get rolling, but boy, are they rolling right now. They just put up 38 on Carolina, and if you don't think that's impressive, they put up 36 on Tampa Bay. If that's not impressive, they put up 26 against New Orleans, and they have won three straight games, all division games. They do, however, still have some major defensive woes. They were allowed 20, 30, 24, 22, and 21 points against them this season. Seattle, on the other hand, are heading in the opposite direction. They won their first three games of the year and then proceeded to lose three in a row, including a dreadful showing against the New York Giants. Like the Falcons, Seattle has a good offense. I don't think Seattle's offense is great, but they're a top half of the league offense. Uh, but they have a really bad defense. San Fran put up 36 on them. The Giants put up 29, and the Detroit Lions put up 42. This is another game, uh, and you're going to find this throughout the, this, uh, this presidential address, where I actually like two bets. I like the Falcons here at minus 2.5, and, and I also like the over. I do, however, prefer the over. Seattle is coming off of a bye week, and I have to believe they've worked on some things and will 
we will see a much improved Seattle team. With that said, it's hard to improve your defense when you just simply don't have the players. I think where they will improve is on offense. I think they'll get points on this Atlanta D. I think Atlanta will get points on Seattle. I think this game is going over the total of 51. Uh, and I do like Atlanta at minus two and a half. Okay, next we turn our attention to Tennessee plus eight against Buffalo. Now, as I mentioned, I did have a winning week for my clients last week. Uh, the games I won was San Fran over Seattle. I also won the over in the Washington-Baltimore game and the over in the Lions-Dallas game. I lost Jacksonville, and I did lose on Tennessee on the money line. I'm mad about that loss on Tennessee. I thought the referees gave that game to Indianapolis. There was a complete made-up pass interference call uh, that put Indy in a position to score that winning touchdown. And then there were two completely missed pass interference calls on Tennessee after to put them in position to kick a field goal and tie the game. However, with all that said, we should have taken the damn under in that game. And we're going to take the under now. First off, this Buffalo defense was the fourth best unit in football last season. And I understand that's last season, but they haven't made a whole ton of changes and they're sitting just outside of the top 10 now. And I think their defense is only getting better. Outside of a Hail Mary at the end of the first half, this Buffalo defense played awesome against the Jets. I have to believe this poorest disaster of a Titans offense will be held to under 20 points. I actually think they struggle to get near 16 in this game. As I said last week, we took the Titans. Uh, and they looked... Well, crappy offensively, but they look great defensively. Take out the weird 31 they put on, uh, put up against Miami, and this team has scored 17, 14, 17, and 17 points this season. They're also struggling to run the ball. They're struggling to pass the ball. Will Levis is a total mess, and if you watch the game on Sunday, the play calling really resembled it. They looked scared. They were throwing one-yard outs over and over. They threw two one-yard outs twice in a row on second and nine and third and nine. They are playing scared. Will Levis has turned the ball over too many times. They're even calling plays that don't result in first downs. With that said, not only is the Titans D number one in yards allowed. That's right. The best defense in football in yards allowed by a mile. This D is lights out at stopping the pass. They are the number one passing D in all of football. Now they face the Bills. And this Bills team is finding ways to get the job done. But they're really short on weapons. Even though they're averaging 27 points per game, this is skewed because of their first three games. And especially the 47 they hung on the Jags. In their last three games, this Bulls team has scored 10, 20, and 23. And I think they get around 20 to 23 this Sunday. So here we have two really good defensive units and one horrible offense and one mediocre offense playing outside in windy, crappy, changing weather. This number is too high. 23-16 feels like the highest score available in this game. And that's three points under the total. Take Tennessee and Buffalo under 42 and a half. Now we turn our attention to Cincinnati and Cleveland. Cincinnati minus five and a half. The total here is 43. A nice win by Cincinnati against the Giants on Sunday, and especially kudos to their defense for actually showing up. Now, with that said, any you want a perfect way to fix a bad defense? Play the New York Giants. You want another perfect way to fix a bad defense? Play the Cleveland Browns. I want to give you guys some perspective of how bad Watson and the Browns' offense really is. 51% of their possessions end in punts. They average a league-worst 19.5 yards per possession. Since 2000, Cleveland is tied for 784 out of 798 teams for how many times they've been in the red zone. They've been in the red zone nine times this year. Okay, nine times in the red zone. Oh, my God. At one point in this Philadelphia game, the Browns were one 
for 27 in third down conversions. There is only one team, one team since the year 2000, that's 24 years ago, that is worse in third down possessions than them. And Jamarcus Russell was on that team. Watson has been sacked more than anyone in the league. And most of those sacks are his fault. The Browns have averaged 16 points per game this season. Third worst in football. Well, they are getting Nick Chubb back. That should help. Yeah, maybe. We'll find out. Their offense is so horrible. With that said, if I'm Bradley Chubb or Mari Cooper or Nick Chubb or, well, just about anybody on the team, I wouldn't even show up. What a total waste of Bradley Chubb's career being on the shit-ass Cleveland Browns team. Uh, anyway, breathe, Prez. Even their defense is mediocre. And, well, frankly, there's just no way I could bet this Cleveland Browns team. I know since he has had their issues, but they put together a great D game last week against the New York Giants. And I know it's the New York Giants, but Cleveland's offense is even worse. They couldn't score one single touchdown on offense last week, and they made the red zone once. That's how bad this Cleveland team is. I don't think I'm going to get to the window here, guys. I just don't. But with that said, if I had to, I'm taking Cleveland minus five. Cincinnati minus five and a half. Okay, let's turn our attention to Houston and Green Bay. 41 points on the Patriots' D. That is incredibly impressive. And their defense caused four turnovers. Just an outstanding effort from Houston this past week. But Green Bay, equally as impressive. They held Murray in the cards to 13 points. They put up 34 points themselves. This Green Bay team averages 27 points per game, while Houston is at 24 points per game. But I think they've started off slow. I think we're going to see way more points from Houston than 24 uh, on average a game. I'm looking to take the over in this game, and I'm a little confused on why the number is so low. Green Bay and Houston are 4-6 and six in the league in yards gained. Houston is fifth in passing yards, and both teams are top 10 in possession in just about every other category. I look at these teams and see a very similar style offense, and I think we'll get some very big plays in this game. Now, I do believe that Green Bay is sending out a better D unit here, and I do think that should be the difference in this game. So like I mentioned in the Atlanta game, I like two bets here. I like Green Bay and I like the over. Interestingly uh, enough, neither of these teams have played monsters this year except for Minnesota. Houston lost 34-7 to them, and Green Bay lost by two. I'm not going to overthink this game. I like Green Bay minus three, and I like over the total. I think we see a 31-24 type game. Now, with that said, it is Tuesday, and it is tough to get the full injury reports. Houston is without Collins, and... Going into this game, they might be without Diggs, Woods, and Mixon. If none of them play, I'm not going to like play the over, but I will extra like the Green Bay Packers. Now we turn our attention to Miami and Indianapolis. Guys, uh, before we take this game apart, please join me for a month of NFL and NHL. Seriously, please. Uh, it's $179 for a month of my NFL. For the next seven days, we're going to throw in my NHL for free. These are my two best sports over the last three and a half decades. It is a great deal. Please join me for both my NFL and NHL. Okay, Miami, Indianapolis. Miami plus three and a half. The total in this game is 43 and a half. Now, I know Miami has had a week to prepare. I get it. But hey, if you can't cook, you can't cook. I spent all day preparing my hair. Look at it. It's terrible. Preparation only counts if you have the assets. The issue here is... Is Richardson playing? Is Taylor playing? Even Pittman and Downs are questionable. Now, I expect them to play. Maybe not Taylor, but at least Richardson, Pittman, and Downs. But it is Tuesday. So I'm going to handicap this game, assuming Richardson, Downs, and Pittman are playing. So where are we going here? Well, I cannot play the side. I think this game is going to be a three to four point game, and I think the side is perfect. As for the total, I like under the total here, and I like under the total a lot. Miami is literally averaging 12 points a game, and that included 
a game that Tua played, too, frankly. Indy can score quick. I get it. Richardson can throw deeper than anyone else. I get it. But their offense is middle of the pack, 23 points per game. And their biggest output of the year was with Flacco behind center. And Flacco is not consistent. Yeah, he had a great game two weeks ago. He didn't play great against Tennessee. Defensively, both these teams are in the middle of the pack, allowing teams to score 23 points per game. But that doesn't really matter to me because defense it doesn't matter how bad your defense is. Miami's not putting up a whole bunch of points. And I think Miami's D is good enough to keep Indy under 24 points. I think we're going to see a 20 to 17 type football game take Miami and Indy under the total of 43 and a half. Now we look at Detroit and Minnesota. This is the game of the week. This game is going to be awesome. Lots of money have come in on the Vikings over the last day. It was Detroit plus one and a half. Now it is Detroit plus two and a half. And the total in this game is 49 and a half. Five and oh Vikings hosting the four and one, uh, the five and one Lions. What a shame. Hutchinson is out likely for the entire season. A very costly injury, but one that is irrelevant for handicapping this football game. Let me start by saying this. I am in love with this Detroit Lions team. Their offense is incredible. They just continue to find ways to get guys open. They hit big play after big play. Their running game is sick. Their passing game is sick. Their play action game is sick. And you know what? They ain't looking for a cure to fix this sick. I am uber impressed with the Minnesota Vikings right now as well. And I also think their game features, uh, I also think this game features two of the best young coaches in football. Here is the bottom line. People are going to be looking at the Vikings here as they're coming off of a bye, and we've already seen that given that the line has moved one full point. But I could care less. This game might end up deciding the division, and I am all in on the Lions. I bet they win. I bet they won, win the division. I bet it at the beginning of the season, and I think they have a shot to win the Super Bowl with or without Hutchinson. I would understand this line if they were playing, say, Kansas City in KC, maybe San Fran with a healthy, healthy CMC, but a two-and-a-half-point dog against Sam Darnold? Thank you, bookies. We're going to take the Lions. So now we know I like the Lions at plus two-and-a-half, and for the record, I like them at minus two-and-a-half if you want to bet them on the alternate line but I also like over the total here. This game is being played indoors, and the only way this game stays under is if the Vikings don't score a lot of points. I know the Lions will. The Lions are number one in the league in scoring. They're averaging 30 points a game. Many top 10. They're averaging 28 points a game. I do think both these teams have good D units, but there's way too much firepower on the field for this game to stay over. Also, head-to-head, They've gone over the total of this number five straight times. I like Detroit, and I like the over here. Philadelphia and the New York Giants? I got nothing, guys. I, I, I Honest to God, I can't make a sense of either of these teams right now. It's a straight pass. Vegas and the Rams? Same. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not going to make up anything. I literally have zero to say about the Vegas Rams game. Let's jump right into the Carolina Washington game. Carolina plus seven and a half. The total of this game is 52. We played the over in the Washington game last week against Baltimore, and we're coming right back with it again. I know this is a big total, but we've discussed this a hundred times. Take the highest totals over, the lowest totals under. Washington just put up 23 on Baltimore, but before that, they scored 34 on the Browns, 42 on Arizona, and 38 at on Cincinnati. Now they're playing a dreadful Carolina D. Washington's putting up at least 34 points in this game. This Panthers D allowed 38, 36, and 34 points scored on them in their last three games. That's right, 38, 36, and 34. The only question here is how many points will the Panthers put up? We just saw them score 20 on the Falcons, 10 on the Bears, 24 on Cincy, and 36 on Vegas. We will need 20 points from them for this game to go over, and I think that's totally doable. 
Although this Washington D did great against Cleveland, everyone does. And other than that, they did great against Arizona, but they're so inconsistent again, anyone can. This Washington D is not very good. This game is 34-24 written all over it. That's 58 points. I am going over the total in this game. Now, some could argue Kansas City-San Fran is a more sexy game than Detroit and Minnesota, and I would respect that. This is going to be a doozy of a football game. Luckily, one is early and one is late. We can watch them both. I know I am a sucker and keep betting against the Chiefs, and I'm going to do it again this Sunday. They are 4-1 and one ATS, I get it, but come on, man. The refs have literally gift-wrapped them victories. Honestly, four of their five wins were gifted to them. Now, I'm not saying they are not amazing. Kansas City is amazing. Patrick Mahomes, I think, is the best ever. I think he's better than Brady right now. His ability to make plays out of nothing is second to none. I am so impressed with this guy. It is ridiculous. But this team is not winning every game this year. And I think they lose to San Fran. This is a revenge Super Bowl game for San Fran. And trust me, they have it circled. They're waiting to beat this team. San Fran cares more about this game than Kansas City does. I know Kansas City has owned this team, winning four straight. But I just don't think this is the best KC team we have seen. Their D is their weapon. But no one is stopping this dynamic San Fran offense. San Fran just put up 36 on Seattle, 23 on Arizona without a kicker, 30 on the Pats, 24 on the Rams. They are second in the leagues in yard gained. Top 10 in points scored at 27 per game. They're number three in rushing, and that is without CMC. And they're number two in passing. This offense is right there with the Lions and the Ravens as a top three offense in all of football. And I think they get at least 24 on Kansas City. As for KC, they're getting this the job done, but they're getting it done with smoke and mirrors. And eventually it'll come back to bite them. They were lucky to cover against New Orleans. They were lucky to beat the Chargers. They were lucky to beat the Falcons. They were lucky to beat the Bengals. And they were lucky to beat the Ravens. But hey, that's what good teams do. They win games they shouldn't. But that ends this Sunday. I also do lean on the over here. And I think we see a 27-23 type game. But no need to mess around with the total. Take San Fran and take them on the money line at minus 120. Now we look at the New York Jets and Pittsburgh. Well, I'll bottom line this. We're going to take the under. I don't believe in either of these teams. With that said, I don't know who will start for QB uh, at QB for the Steelers this week. As of now, I'm going to look to play the under. These are two lights-out defensive units and two teams that are struggling to score consistently. Pitt has held their opponents to 14 points a game, and the Jets have held their opponents to 18 points a game. And trust me, both of those teams' opponents had better offenses than these two teams are trotting out. Take away a miracle Hail Mary against Buffalo. The Jets put up 13 on the Bills, 17 on Minnesota, and 9 on Denver. Now, I know Devontae Adams might be uh, playing in, the gr in green this Sunday. I don't think it matters. 37 points, 20 to 16 is still an under. I don't think either teams are going to get near 20. Take under the total of the New York Jets and Pittsburgh. That's it for the NFL Presidential Address. Make sure to take advantage of my promo, $179. You get my NHL and NFL one month combined. Thank you all for watching, everybody. Let's kick ass, and I will see you next week. Make sure to like this video, to comment on this video, and to subscribe to our channel. Lots of love.